welcome you all to this course on electron diffraction and imaging. In today's class, we will discuss how to represent uh, planes and directions in direct and reciprocal lattice okay? and the relationship between the directions and the planes in real and reciprocal lattice which are uh, repre uh, represented in Sohn's law. Okay? In fact, uh, uh, about planes and directions okay especially with respect to direct lattice and uh, reciprocal lattice how they are represented theoretically okay the theoretical aspects of it we have uh, studied in a uh, regular class what i will do today is uh, just uh, i will uh, tell you how to uh, represent them okay or how they are represented okay uh, for example generally you know that we represent directions using a square bracket maybe u v w okay what it really means in a, a crystal structure essentially is that from the coordinate system which we have chosen for the crystal suppose this is a b and c direction any vector r if you wanted to find its uh, the vector, this is represented as the vector r equals u into a plus v into b plus w into c. So, a, b and c are nothing but vectors in the x, y and z direction in the crystal structure which we have chosen and u, v, w are coefficients of uh, these vectors that is how much magnitude we have to uh, move along A, B and C that is what it is represented. This we will be writing it just like this R U V W with a square bracket. If we use a square bracket it means that it is a specific direction and if we use a bracket with an arrow head u v w this means that it is the family of directions which are included okay this could be this means that it could be essentially u v w v u w okay all combinations or that is this could be a vector like this which includes all combinations plus uh, it could be u bar v bar w all these directions because these each one of them are distinct uh, directions this full family is represented with this symbol okay let us take the case suppose it is only one uh, uh, unit vector in this direction x direction or a direction and another in b direction and 0 in the z direction then the vector r will turn out to be okay 1 into a plus uh, 1 into b plus 0 into c. So, this vector itself as a representation when we uh, as we uh, we represent this as 1 1 0 this is how this direction is being represented ok. If this includes all the directions 1 1 0 ok 1 1 bar 0 and 1 bar 1 0 1 bar 1 bar 0 if you wanted to represent all of them together in single way we use this notation 1 1 0 this is how vector so essentially when we write 1 1 0 this representation is actually representing coefficients of the vector r this one should always remember how are the planes represented planes are represented using what we call as Miller indices. As you have studied to represent the plane what we do it is we choose that axis and draw the plane ok. Suppose this is the plane which is cutting along A axis. Okay, the intercept which makes a by h 
B by H is the intercept which B by K is the intercept which makes along the B axis and along this C direction it makes an intercept C by L okay. This is A, B and C are the points at which the plane is cutting this uh, axis okay. Then the Miller indices are optional. We find out that intercepts which it is making it is A by H then B by K and C by L okay. We find out the inverse of it then this will turn out to be H by A okay, K by B okay l by c okay then uh, removing the common factor then we will be writing h k l as the miller indices of these planes okay and example if you wanted to represent a family of planes then we use curly brackets to represent h k l okay this is how uh, planes are represented but what is essentially important and which one should always uh, understand okay, is that we write that intercept which it makes as A by H, B by K and C by L okay. At this point we have not talked about why we are doing so okay. There is a, a special reason for this. This will become clear as we progress further. Okay. Let us take an example. Suppose uh, along the x axis okay it makes an intercept of one unit and along B and C axis it is not cutting it. So, the intercept which it makes it is only at infinity. Then we will be writing this as nothing but 1 by 1 okay, 1 by infinity the reciprocal of it 1 by infinity this will turn out to be 1 0 0. This is how this we represent as the Miller indices of this plane. Okay. Just an another example suppose it is making an intercept not at uh, 1 0 uh, along the x axis okay, not at 1 unit instead of making it at here suppose it is making an intercept somewhere here 2 units then this will become that intercept will become 2 infinity and infinity. Okay, then it will be 1 by half okay, 0, 0 and uh, Miller indices are always represented not in fractions they are always represented in whole numbers. That means that if we multiply it by 2 then this will turn out to be a whole fraction 1, 0, 0. So, from this one aspect which becomes very clear is that irrespective of where it is cutting it okay, along the x axis the Miller indices of all these planes are 1 0 0. Okay. This is what you might have noticed that uh, when planes which are parallel to each other this plane is there suppose there is an another plane which is there like this which cuts this plane also will have the same Miller indices. Okay. This property one can directly derive uh, this way and this is one example to illustrate it. Okay. Uh, in this suppose we wanted to find out uh, this vector a c okay because in this plane a b c okay we have uh, uh, vectors a c a b and b c. So, this can be represented a c will be represented as uh, a o plus O C this will be nothing but will turn out to be minus A by H plus C by L okay. and A B is nothing but A O plus O B this will be again minus A by H plus uh, B by and B C is nothing but B O plus uh, O C 
this is B O is uh, minus B by K plus C by L. Okay. If we consider a direction which is lying in this plane, okay, the direction normally a general direction be represented by the uh, vector r equals u a plus v b plus w c. Okay. Since this vector is lying in the plane, if we consider the plane normal, okay, the plane normal is uh, uh, the angle between the plane normal and this direction has to be 90 degree. Okay. And in fact, this Miller indices which we are using it okay, is nothing but as you have studied in reciprocal space okay, when we consider in a reciprocal space uh, the vector is represented as r star if you consider that will be h into a star plus k into b star plus l into c star. The relationship between all these uh, r and r star all these aspects you have studied uh, in the class on reciprocal lattice. Okay. What one should uh, understand is that uh, if there is a vector which is lying in this particular plane, okay, that vector as indices u, v, w. Okay. If you wanted to find out a vector which is uh, the uh, product of uh, 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 this vector that is uh, u, v, w and uh, h, k l if you want to know how we can go about and uh, do it is that any vector which is lying in this plane r can be represented as some lambda into a b okay, plus mu into b c. In this way we can represent it correct lambda and mu are uh, uh, some constants okay, which we have to uh, find out. Okay. If we have a vector like this, uh, uh, then how do we represent uh, R? Okay. Then this AB vector we have defined it in this fashion, then the R will turn out to be lambda into minus A by H plus C by L plus mu into B C will turn out to be minus B by K plus C by L. Okay. From this if you try to find out R will be equal to lambda by H minus lambda by H into A. minus plus minus mu b by k into b plus lambda plus mu by l into c this is how it will turn out to be. But generally how do we define a vector uh, r this we are representing it as u into a plus v into b plus w into uh, c. So, now we can find out that u equals minus lambda by h v equals minus mu by k and w equals lambda plus mu by L. Okay. From this we can just write it that mu h equals minus lambda v k equals 
minus mu okay and uh, l into w okay, equals lambda plus mu if we add both the right hand and the left hand side this will become u h plus uh, k v plus l w equals 0 okay. This simple derivation itself shows that the any direction which is lying in a particular plane okay the dot product of it turns out to be uh, 0 okay. This is called as the V's this expression is called as the V zone uh, law okay because one should understand uh, what this uh, zone law means. Here what we have considered is that we have considered one specific direction okay in a particular plane. There can be many directions which could be there okay. Suppose there is one direction u1, u1, w1 with indices, another direction with uh, u2, v2, w2, okay. Both of this will satisfy the zone law, then we can write it as uh, uh, u1 into h plus. If you add this together, okay, what we can find out is that if these two directions are known, okay, then we can find out what this value of HKL, okay, that can be done by just solving this equation, or we can write it in an another form, okay, in which what we can do it is since it's vectorial, it can be in a determinant form. Then we can, what we can do it is that A, B, C u1, u2, u1, v1, w1, u2, v2, w2 okay. Then this vector r will be which we write it as uh, u. Then if you take this product the value of because hkl is the one which we represent the direction this will turn out to be. v1 w2 minus v2 w1 k will turn out to be u1 w2 minus u2 w1 l will be u1 v2 minus u2 v1 okay. Using this formula also we can find out the million that is if we know two directions okay two directions are given we wanted to find out what is the plane which is containing these two directions using this formula okay we can find out the uh, planes which contain these two uh, directions, the Miller indices of the planes could be determined using uh, this formula. Okay. The converse essentially is that suppose we have two directions are there, uh, two planes are given, we wanted to find out the direction which contains that plane that means that the directions which are common to these planes. For example, suppose we have a one plane which is there like this and there is an another plane okay, is cutting through this. This is the direction in which these two planes are intersecting that means that this direction 
is lying in the plane. Suppose this planes in this SR H1 K1 L1 and this particular plane is H2 K2 L2. Okay. These two planes suppose it contains the indices of the one which we wanted to find out is U V W. Okay. Then in that same way we can write a determinant. Okay. Here it will turn out to be H1 K1 L1 H2 K2 L2. Okay. Then this will turn out to be U will turn out to be K1 L2 minus uh, Uh, K1 L minus K2 L1, V will turn out to be minus of H1 L2 minus H2 L1, W will turn out to be H1 L2 minus H2 L1. Okay. This way we can represent uh, the direction uh, we can find out indices of direction which are uh, contain uh, two planes which are common to uh, two planes. Okay. Another aspect which we have to consider is that in all these uh, derivations the way we have considered here is there is a way in which we are in a vectorial representation we represent the direction and in the Miller indices form we represent uh, uh, the planes. Okay. What is the other way in which uh, this could be represented? Because uh, when we studied uh, uh, diffraction, the relations between the real and the reciprocal lattice, we derived that one of the condition is that I 2 pi k dot r should be equal to 1, where r is a vector in real lattice. k is a vector in reciprocal lattice. Okay. And then the derivations which were derived is that relations between real and reciprocal lattice is that if A star is a vector in the reciprocal lattice, this will be nothing but B cross C by A dot B cross C. All these expressions have been derived. So, I am just writing the final answer divided by B dot C cross A and C star equals A cross B by C dot A cross B. Okay. And uh, for this condition to be satisfied, okay, k dot r has to be an integer m where m can hand value 0 r plus minus 1 plus minus 2, all values are possible. Okay. When we consider a case here, when k is a specific vector okay, in reciprocal lattice and then we are trying to find out the various values of r okay, for which 
this condition is being satisfied. This condition can be that suppose k1 is a specific vector in reciprocal lattice. So, k1 dot r can be 0, k1 dot r can be equal to plus 1, k1 dot r can be equal to minus 1 ok. All these things essentially mean that when k1 dot r equals 0 ok, this means that including for a point which is passing through the origin ok, this equation is uh, satisfied. That means all the vectors ok which are perpendicular to the vector k1 ok and passing through the origin ok they satisfy this condition ok. When we say that they are perpendicular that means that all the the plane which is represented by the vectors this all the set of r vectors ok they define a particular plane. This is a plane which is passing through the origin. So, in crystallography terms if we try to represent this plane is suppose uh, we draw a unit cell of a lattice ok. Suppose we assume that there is a plane like this, the other one is a plane which is parallel to it and passing through this plane is also perpendicular to this specific plane which is passing through the origin ok. All the lattice points which are lying, various lattice points which are lying on this plane ok. If you consider that uh, them as vectors then they will satisfy this condition. What does this k1 dot r equal to plus 1 represent? It is essentially a plane like this ok where we have similar lattice points which are there. From the origin we can try to mark ok what is going to be the vectors which are corresponding to them ok. All these vectors ok with respect to the k1 vector which we have chosen with respect to that and we know that this plane is perpendicular to the vector. So, this plane also which contains all these vectors they are all perpendicular to this vector k1 ok. So, that is satisfy. So, this is another set of r values, this is another set of r values which will satisfy that is with respect to a planes which are behind this. Similarly, we can have series of planes which are in front as well as behind. So, what finally it represents is that each of this expression tells that from this expression we can find a set of values of r ok which represents lattice points in those planes ok. And we know in diffraction ok these planes ok are the ones which are responsible for diffraction, uh, 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 diffraction to occur depending upon what is the direction in which the beam is falling and it should satisfy the condition 2D sin theta should be equal to n lambda ok. So, in real lattice it essentially means that uh, there are set of planes ok which are perpendicular to a vector k 1 ok. This is essentially nothing but a reciprocal lattice vector ok. All the planes whether it passes through the origin or it is parallel to each other for all of them this reciprocal lattice vector remains the same ok. This reciprocal lattice vector as you remember it is defined in terms of this r star is defined as h into a star plus k into b star plus l into c star ok. So, this k 1 is nothing but a specific reciprocal lattice vector where the values can be a specific value in this case it will be h1 k1 l1. So, this h k1 l1 which we used to define the Miller indices of the planes are nothing but 
coefficients of the uh, reciprocal lattice vector. Okay, this is what one should remember. Okay, suppose we consider a vector R. Okay, which again I am coming at the same U A plus V B plus W C. Okay, this is how we define a vector in real space, and a plane is represented. Okay, a, as a plane normal, and that can be nothing but in this particular form we can represent it. In this particular case, if you try to find out okay, the cross product, uh, the dot product of it, because this one and this R is vector which is perpendicular to it, then it will turn out to be u into h plus v into k plus w into l and this should be equal to 0. So, this is what we call it as the v zone law. Okay. This way also we can derive the uh, v zone law. The other way if we look at it is that for this expression for a specific vector r okay, in the real lattice which we have chosen we can have n number of reciprocal lattice points okay, which also satisfy this condition k1 dot r equals 0. Okay. Then we will write this k dot r1 equals 0, k dot r1 equals 1, k dot r2 equals plus 1, this is minus 1. Okay. Like this we can have. Here this set of uh, reciprocal lattice vectors they will be lying on a plane okay, which is perpendicular to this direction R1 in the real lattice. So, this represents nothing but a reciprocal lattice sheet. Okay. In the diffraction when you have studied okay, you know that uh, uh, in the electron diffraction it is a set of plane which is perpendicular to a particular direction which is uh, uh, responsible uh, for diffraction. Okay. And we know that once the beam direction is defined we can identify for electron diffraction using high energy electrons what all the uh, reciprocal lattice vectors which are lying in that specific plane will give rise to it. Okay. So, each of these this represents one plane this represents an another plane okay, which is nothing but the uh, plane for which this k dot r 1 becomes uh, plus 1 this represents an another plane where k dot r 2 becomes uh, minus 1 essentially what this represents is in terms of a reciprocal lattice if you draw a reciprocal lattice for a simple cubic cell Okay, these are all the reciprocal lattice points if we consider it okay. and this is the direction for example in which the beam is falling this represents r1 the direction in the real lattice. Okay. Then with respect to a reciprocal lattice all these vectors this one this vector this vector okay, this if you represent r1 r2 no this represents reciprocal lattice vectors k1 k2 k3. Okay. The dot product with respect to all these vectors turn out to be 0. That means that all these vectors if you look at it these reciprocal lattice vectors are lying on a particular uh, uh, sheet. Okay. Similarly, if you consider this vector, this vector, this vector, okay. we will write it as k3, k4, k5 all this set of reciprocal lattice vectors are lying on a plane okay, which is parallel to it but just above it and this set of ones satisfy the condition k dot r1 turns out to be 1. If you consider a plane which is below it we can find out a set of reciprocal lattice points. Okay. Essentially 
the one which is there which satisfies this condition k dot r1 equals 0 this we call it as the normally the v zone law okay and this set of reciprocal lattice points okay this is called as the um, uh, zero order uh, lave zone okay this is how it's represented so all the reciprocal lattice vectors in this plane okay which is perpendicular to this beam direction okay when they appear in the diffraction pattern we call it them as the zero order lave zone all the reciprocal lattice vectors which are there on this particular plane which satisfies this condition k1 dot r1 equal plus 1 okay they also satisfies this diffraction condition they are called as the first order lave zone and the one which on that above that will be called as the uh, second order that is k dot r1 equals 2 this is called as the second order lave zone okay in general these are called as the higher order lave zones this uh, diffraction uh, spots are generally seen in electron diffraction as well as in oscillating x-ray diffraction we could see this sort of patterns could be seen okay here this condition when we consider it with respect to for a particular k1 direction which is this is nothing but representing the different types of planes that is the planes which are parallel to each other which are perpendicular to a particular direction k that is the direction which is parallel to the plane normal okay and they represent okay the different types of planes which are responsible for diffraction okay with respect to the diffraction pattern a specific direction if we consider it okay in the rear lattice we can have different types of diffraction spots that condition is also represented by the same equation okay in this particular case we are trying to find out the set of values of r for a specific value of k1 which satisfies this equation okay that means that in this if we consider it almost all the planes okay which are responsible for uh, diffraction we could consider uh, uh, we could take it into account suppose we consider another value of k okay instead of k1 we take k2 okay then what it will happen is that this will represent instead of this plane maybe an another plane like this okay which is passing through the origin okay having a different uh, k1 vectors okay uh, they satisfy this condition that means all the planes which are parallel to this plane okay onto which these various reciprocal lattice planes uh, various uh, real lattice points will be lying okay so essentially uh, this condition represents the condition for the uh, Bragg law okay what all the planes in real lattice are, are atom positions which are lying on different lattice planes which is going to participate in the diffraction okay here this represents given a specific direction in the beam okay what all the reciprocal lattice uh, reflections which will be appearing in the diffraction once the beam direction has been uh, fixed okay that is what we are trying to find out in this particular case once a particular reciprocal lattice vector has been chosen what is what are the planes which are going to participate to give the diffraction spot okay there is a subtle difference between these two statements that is what essentially this equation uh, uh, represents okay the condition for uh, this one when k dot r equals to 0 that is what we call it as the V's zone law okay this can be used both in real lattice as well as the uh, reciprocal lattice okay then I had also shown how to find out the directions okay given a set of reciprocal lattice uh, planes or it is equivalent to nothing but uh, 
reciprocal coefficients of reciprocal lattice vectors, how to find out the direction which is uh, uh, normal to the reciprocal lattice vectors. Similarly, that same way given specific uh, uh, different directions, okay, we can find out the direction of the reciprocal lattice vector or the Miller indices of the uh, plane which contain both the vectors. Okay. This is quite often used okay, in uh, diffraction okay, to understand the diffraction and also in indexing this diffraction pattern. What is essentially important is that uh, apart from this expression as I mentioned in uh, most of the time we use the terminology like uh, square brackets to represent direction. Okay. Then uh, with arrows we represent a family of direction okay. and this is u v w, this is h k l we used to represent a plane with a normal bracket and with a curly bracket okay, scale. These are indices which are used and uh, if you have to represent uh, any direction minus h k l, how we do it is instead of writing minus h k l, we do it h bar k l. This is the convention which is being followed to represent the plane. These things one should remember, okay. but all these indices you should remember that uh, here uh, this represents a direction in real lattice. Okay. These represents uh, coefficients of uh, uh, of a direction okay, which is represented in reciprocal lattice. Okay. I will stop here now. Thank you.